The first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. Apologies for absence have so far been received from councillors Balmain, I Duffy, R Duffy, Holden and Robinson. Are there any other apologies? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, Leslie McKay. The next item on the agenda is confirmation of the minutes. There are three sets of minutes to be confirmed this evening, which we will need to deal with separately. <coughs> First, can I please have a proposal that, that the minutes of the extraordinary council meeting held on the 12th of April 2018 be approved as a correct record? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I so move. Uh, second, that was Madam Mayor. Does anyone want to comment on the factual accuracy of the minutes or propose an amendment? Would those present that would those members present at the extraordinary meeting on the 12th of April who are in favour of confirming the minutes as a correct record please indicate? Do I want to count as counted? Those against? No. Any abstentions? No. The minutes of the extraordinary meeting on the 12th of April are confirmed. Next, can I please have a proposal that the minutes of the scheduled council meeting held on the 12th of April 2018 be approved as a correct record? Thank you, Madam Mayor. So moved. I'd like to second that proposal, Madam Mayor. Does anyone want to comment on the factual accuracy of the minutes or propose an amendment? <coughs> Would those members present at the ordinary council meeting on the 12th of April who are in favour of confirming the minutes as a correct record please indicate? Those against? Nine. Nine. Any abstentions? The minutes of the ordinary meeting on the 12th of April are confirmed. Next, can I please have a proposal that the minutes of the annual council meeting held on the 10th of May 2018 be approved? as a correct record. I'd like to propose those, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Is there a seconder for that proposal? I'll second those minutes, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Does anybody want to comment on the factual accuracy of the minutes or propose an amendment? No. Would those members present at the annual council meeting on the 10th of May who are in favour of confirming the minutes as a correct record please indicate? That's unanimous, thank you. The minutes of the annual council meeting on the 10th of May are confirmed. The next item on the agenda is declarations of interest. Do any members have any interest to declare on any items included in the agenda? Uh, the next item is announcements. I have no mayoral announcements this evening. However, I understand the Chief Executive has an announcement to make on a constitutional issue. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and it's in respect of I received um, on Friday the 8th of June um, an email from councillors Ian and Ruth Duffy confirming that they'd resigned from the Labour Group. Uh, and as such, that has uh, implications for the uh, places um, on the various committees etc. Um, calculating the uh, allocations uh, can be quite complicated and it doesn't fall to me, thankfully it falls to Roy. Uh, Roy is on with that task and we will bring a report to next full council which will itemise uh, um, seat allocations and the impact it has um, with the decision of councillors Ian and Ruth Duffy to resign from uh, the, the Labour Group. Thank you Madam Mayor. Thank you. 
Are there any other announcements? The next item is public questions and statements. We have one question this evening from Alderman Roger Brooks to the resources portfolio holder about the redevelopment of the Garstang Community Centre site. Alderman Brooks, would you please ask your question as submitted and circulated now? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I hope you have a successful year ahead of you. My question is, on the 12th of April 2018, Councillor Davy Atkins addressed a clear and un unambiguous question to the resources portfolio holder, namely, why are key worker homes delaying completion of the contract for development of Garstang Community Centre? Could we be given an indication when this would happen? Councillor Vincent, the resources portfolio holder, gave an equally clear and unambiguous reply. Key worker homes have been given a number of reasons for the delay, most of which are covered by legal privilege. The Council have set a date of the 31st of May 2018 for the exchange of contracts, with completion a couple of months after that, and the purchase purchaser has indicated they would beat that deadline. If the exchange has not taken place, the council will consider remarketing the site. I quote there from the minutes of that meeting. Most people would assume that in the circumstances an exchange of contract would be unconditional, that the contract that had now been offered by key worker is conditional and then complying with conditions attached to the planning consent dated the 22nd of March 2017, 14 months ago, with a completion date now put back to the 31st of October 2018. When he gave his response, was the portfolio holder aware that key worker homes had not complied with the planning conditions? And does he agree that key worker homes have not complied with the deadlines that he set on the 12th of April 2018, and consequently that the site should now be remarketed? I could be quite sure, old member, but I will give you a I, I'm not sure of the form, as you know. I, I did, first of all, I did not state or even infer that contracts would have to be unconditionally exchanged by the end of May. The realities of local government sales often mean that conditions are included to protect the public interest. Contracts were in fact exchanged with key worker homes on Friday the 25th of May, with a 5% deposit being paid the same day, uh, and I would thus, it would thus not be appropriate, in my view, to remarket the site as suggested by you. The contract to complete is conditional upon the granting of planning permission, which is itself the subject of a Section 106 agreement being signed. There are a number of signatories to the agreement, including ourselves and the County Council. Planning permission will not be issued until the agreement has been completed, a process that protects both the Borough and the County Council. Due to the number of signatories, the completion of the agreement will take some time, uh, and in those circumstances, a long stop date in the contract, which is not unusual, uh, requires the sale to be completed by the end of October 2018, uh, and a condition, that condition also protects the Borough Council. I have to, uh, as an addition to that, I have to say that I would have liked to see a, an earlier completion date than that, and I think the key worker homes and the Council are genuinely convinced that they can work towards an earlier completion, so that is very much a backstop date for all the signatures to be appended. Alderman Brooks, having heard Councillor Vincent's response, do you wish to ask a supplementary question? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I suggest that the reason that key worker homes have not signed a contract is quite simple, that under a Section 106 agreement you have to be the owner of land before you accept the terms of a 106 agreement, and they clearly are not owners of that land. We cannot grant a section 106 agreement to ourselves, as we are the owners. 
I suggest that is a very fundamental point. Fourteen months after the... Fourteen months after planning, had not Lady Atkins asked a question, this would have continued to drift. It has been going on for at least four years since key worker homes came on the scene. There have been protests in Garstang. I came past a site that they own at the bottom of Breck Road a few moments ago. Alderman, Alderman Brought, are you asking a question, please? Is it, I'm puzzled to know what it is that key worker homes, why key worker homes have been given so many chances to complete this contract, sign a contract, and yet they continue to delay. People, that, certainly people in Garstang, are losing patience. I think I made it quite clear when I answered the original question in April that we were losing patience as well, which is why a deadline was put on the contract exchange of the 31st of May. They complied with that uh, term. They have signed a contract. The condition, in my view, is one that they will have to meet if they want to go ahead with it. Uh, the, they have completed a 111 agreement, as I understand it, or will do, which will mean that the 106 agreement will be in place at the appropriate time. It would be inappropriate, given the amount of time and effort that has gone into this site, in my view, and in view of the fact that it, a contract has actually been exchanged, albeit conditional, for us to start to remarket something which is actually sold. Will it be remarketed if they don't complete on the 31st of October? The next item is questions on notice from councillors. There are a total of six questions under procedure rule 12 this evening. One from councillor B. Stevenson, which is printed on the main agenda, and a further five from councillors Rayner, Fail, Lees and Barraclough which were printed and circulated last Friday. Members are therefore requested to ask their questions in a concise manner. Each member who has submitted a question will be entitled to ask a supplementary question when they have received a response from the relevant portfolio holder. But the supplementary question must arise directly from the original question or the response given. Again, members are asked to submit any such supplementary questions concisely. Councillor B. Stevenson, please ask your question about fly tipping to street scene, parks and open spaces portfolio holder now. Obliged to you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, I, I'll just uh, read it out. Um, obviously, everybody's uh, ready, I hope. Uh, could the street scene, parks and open spaces portfolio holder please provide a statement regarding fly tipping on privately owned back alleys as rubbish continues to pile up in certain areas. At what point can Wire <coughs> Council take action and intervene? Councillor Bridge, would you please respond? Obliged, Madam Mayor. Um, well, first of all, uh, this, it's specifically about private land that you've asked. So therefore, um, when it is reported, we will go down, officers will go down and investigate. Obviously we need the permission of the landowner uh, to go on to, to their property to investigate. However, once we're on there, we'll have a look. We will look at the waste, see if we can find out where it has come from and who has, t who has actually dumped it. If we can find out, we may take enforcement action. That being said, it's the landowner's responsibility to remove this waste. Now, if he or she is reluctant or unwilling to do so, we may actually uh, prosecute and may do that ourselves and charge them. But, um, thank you for that. Um, Councillor Stevenson, if you wish to ask a supplementary question, please Yes, yes I, I do, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, the supplementary question really that is, it's not really told me anything more than what, uh, what the, the officers uh, uh, have already told me. Um, uh, what, what do you say, Councillor Briggs, that it's really, when a council like myself considers it really is bad, that, that you then uh, uh, come in and take up, um, take action? Um, 
you know, it, it's um, the, the problem we have, uh, and I'm sure you, you would agree that to try to contact the landlords, who many of them were absent, uh, you can't get to get through to find out who they are, uh, and it takes time. And in that period, more and more rubbish is piling up. That is the problem. The real thing I'm asking you is, is that. Um, well, it's to put it bluntly is this, is when a councillor says to you, or says to one of the officers, and all of us have this, certainly we have it in Fleetwood, enough is enough, this has gone on for a long time, are you going to clear it or what? Is that the case then you will take action? Because, you, you, you know, it, it's, it's ambiguous, Simon. And I would like you to join me sometime, and it's convenient, Councilor to go down Stevenson. and see what this Councilor problem Stevenson, is. Councillor Stevenson, needs you. to be a question. Yes, I've asked him a question, Madam Mayor, with all, all due respect. Thank you. Well, the council can only do so much. We can, we, ultimately, our council taxpayers are paying for this service. I can't say that we would be able to go to every site and clean up every site for free, because we wouldn't be able to. We are trying very hard to address the problem of fly tipping. Um, we are trying very hard to address just problem of people dropping litter. We're, for instance, at the moment we're, uh, we've just engaged with the Keep Britain Tidy group. Um, we have a, we've gone into uh, a relationship with them to try and stop people littering as well. And so with that they will offer us all sorts of um, resources, um, sharing good practice. In fact, they're just about to run out a, a new campaign, national campaign, which we'll be part of which might be prescient here, it's actually very hard hitting and it, it says don't be a tosser. <laughs> so um, I can't say anything else. Well, <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, thank if I may sorry. ask another sorry. question. Um, sorry uh, Councillor uh, Stevenson. Sorry Councillor Stevenson. One? You've asked your question, no. sorry. Oh dear. Sorry, sorry Councillor. Okay, the next question is from Councillor Rayner. Councillor Rayner, please ask your question about the Russell flood defences to the neighbourhood services and community safety portfolio holder now. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Berry, um, the official opening of the new Russell flood defences was really enjoyable and the whole, the whole area looked absolutely amazing. Um, but I've had a lot of residents contact me in person and via email asking, after they put up with the building works all this time, why they weren't invited or aware of the event. Would you please respond? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, can I firstly thank you for your kind comments regarding the uh, Russell Defence Scheme? Um, the official ceremony um, which you attended uh, formed part of a three-phased opening and was intended to mark the completion of the works. Um, it was attended by key members of the contractor, Balfour Beatty, and, and the funders, including the Environment Agency, DEFRA, Lancashire County Council, Fleetwood Town Council, uh, Wire Council officers and ward members. A separate event followed, organised on behalf of charities who wished to be the first members of the public to walk the promenade as part of an awareness and fundraising exercise. The scheme was then open to the public at the earliest opportunity after this. Um, as regards the, the completion of the works, we were quite literally working to the, to the last day, so it wasn't feasible or safe to open it earlier than we actually did. So that, I, I can only, that's the best answer I can give to your question at this moment. Councillor Rayner, if you wish to ask a supplementary question, please do so now. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so, with that said, um, can we have a community event? Yeah, yeah there's, there's no reason. I mean, what we're planning to do at uh, we're going to celebrate this and other coastal assets over the summer period through a series of events that will be attended by the public. Uh, others will be organising this, but there will be events uh, throughout the, the summer season for the public to attend, not only at Rossell, but other, other areas as well. Yes, they will be publicised by comms. Thank you, Councillor. The next question is from Councillor Fail. Councillor Fail, please ask your question about dog fouling fines 
to the street scene, parks and open spaces portfolio holder now. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Could the street scene, parks and open spaces portfolio holder please provide a statement as to the total number of dog fouling fines the Council has issued over the last 12 months for which figures are available, together with the monetary amount that this equates to, uh, a written response giving the breakdown by ward is also requested. Thank you. Councillor Bridge, would you please respond? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, for, well, 2017 to 18, uh, there were four uh, fixed penalty notices issued at £75 per incident. That's, obviously, that's £300. And then 2018 to date, there was one. And that's, of course, it's gone up to £100. So that's a total of £400. The, uh, there was one incident in Jubilee, two in Stanner, one in Great Eccleston, sorry, and a further one in Jubilee. All incidents, the offenders were residents in those wards, except for one incident at Stanner where the offender was in Blackpool. Councillor Fail, if you wish to ask a supplementary question, please do so now. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The new pub public space protection orders introduced in October 2017 included a new control measure for dog owners to have suitable means of picking up after their dog. The Council rightly took a softly, softly approach, educating dog walkers whilst the new rules were in their infancy. Sadly, the problem is not going away. On each of two recent Sunday afternoons, I reported via the Council website over 20 separate dog fouling incidents along the promenade from the Cove Cafe to Russell Hospital. With such a paltry amount in fines, as we've just heard, in the whole of wire for the previous 12 months, does the portfolio holder agree that it's time to stop pussyfooting around and actually deal with the culprits? Well, <laughs> um, rather interesting concept of pussyfooting around. Um, and it's the wrong animal as well. Um, but um, I'm not sure what you would be suggesting we do. Do we have people stood on every street corner? It is a, such a difficult problem. I myself walk a dog every morning um, and... Uh, although I don't see people not picking up their waste, there's lots of it about. Unfortunately, it is still about education. We all know it happens when it goes dark, people will walk away from it. We all know it happens when nobody's in sight, again, people walk away from it. Unless people take responsibility, it is very difficult uh, to make them do so. I would agree with you that, um, when appropriate, enforcement action should be taken. I have to say that we now have a zero tolerance um, policy on dog fouling. We will no longer be trying to tell, talk to people about this, but we will be actually fining them. But it's down to, again, education, and it's part of our job as well as, as councillors. I myself had a problem uh, near my home, and um, I spent a few days walking up and down first thing in the morning and later on in the evening and when I saw people with dogs thanking them for picking up their dog litter didn't accuse anybody of not picking it up that problem has virtually gone away we all have to take responsibility with regard to reporting thank you for reporting it on the website I can tell you that as soon as it's reported it goes straight to the job, job sheet and we have a fantastic um, turnaround of picking it up it's a perennial problem. It is something that we're looking at. But unfortunately, it's down to individuals, not just the council. Thank you. The next question is also from Councillor Fail. Councillor Fail, please ask your question about Russell Promenade to the Neighbourhood Services and Community Safety Portfolio Holder now. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Following on from the official opening of the Russell Promenade scheme, the Neighbourhood services and community safety portfolio holder report also refers to some potential work along Russell Beach. With the stretch between the Cove Cafe and Russell Hospital now not meeting the standards set by 
the modern promenades to the north and south, could the portfolio holder elaborate on what plans there exist to enhance some or all of this promenade stretch? Councillor Barry, would you please respond? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the works completed at Cleveleys and the Rossell Sea Defence areas uh, were in line and we're in line with the Wire Urban Core Strategy for Coastal Defence 2013, which sets the standard of protection for the full peninsula. The aim is to ensure that a 1 in, one in 200 year or 0.5% of flooding risk in any one year is maintained. The standard of protection is to be maintained by a further scheme known as the Wire Beach Management Scheme in the first 15 years of the period. This scheme will concentrate on the beaches as the primary defence, although there may be some options to repair life expired defences. As paragraph 6.1 of my report to Council this evening states, indicative funding has just been allocated to the scheme and we are now submitting to the Environment Agency for approval specific proposals to develop our business case and the initial design of the proposed works. These will have to fall within the terms of the strategy which is contained on the Council website. For the area of coast between Cathy Cove and Westway, the strategy envisages some concrete repairs to the existing promenade seawall and revetments, together with beach management which will provide new groins and beach recharge designed to increase beach levels to provide better protection against overtopping and reduce wave impact. Whilst the strategy envisages further works to enhance and replace the existing promenade and defences in this area, this will be some time in the future as the funding criteria cannot be met at the present time. Councillor Fail, if you wish to ask a supplementary question, please do so now. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, with regard to the Planning and Economic Development Portfolio Holders Report on the A585 Mains Lane Bypass, could the portfolio holder please provide the full content of the consultation response submitted by the Head of Planning Services under, the delegate, under delegated powers? Councillor Michael Vincent, would you please respond? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, thank you, Councillor Louise. Um, yep, I have a copy here for you. Um, you can send one on email. It's a response to public consultations. If you want one, just ask. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> what are the portfolio holders' views on whether this will benefit Thornton, Cleveland, and Fleetwood? Does he believe? Uh, that it will provide the necessary shot in the arm for, the, for employment within wire and crucially will it support the 4,000 houses or so that will have to be built in the west of the borough from 2011 for, as a, between 2011 and 2031 I have my uh, concerns about its usefulness thank you uh, thank you uh I'm, I'm sorry, Councillor Lees. Um, the, Madam Mayor said right at the start that the, your supplementary question must be directly related to your first question. Your first question related to the consultation response that was sent from the Head of Planning Services. Councillor Vincent answered that and said he has a copy there for you. If you want a paper copy, we will also email you a copy. Um, you, you made a statement. You didn't ask a supplementary question that was directly related to your first question. Could I respond, Could I respond yeah, to yeah. that? Uh, well, the, it, it, it was in, in effect uh, 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 related to the A585. Um, does, he, does he believe that the Thornton, Cleavers and Fleetwood areas uh, will, uh, uh, will benefit by the, uh, the new bypass? 
that's the that's the link that I was trying to put across, and of course how it will affect the development of the houses on the in this area. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I can answer it now. Or I can just answer it during the portfolio report. Um, uh, the answer basically is that this is not meant to be a magic bullet for the problems on the A585. It's meant to be one thing as part of a wider strategy to relieve the problems with traffic. Um, it, I don't get the negativity about it. Um, it people seem to be sceptical that it will have a, a great impact for Fleetwood and Thornton. If it has an impact for Carlton, if it has an impact for Polton and those areas, that by its very nature takes traffic away from the A585, which frees up capacity for Fleetwood and Thornton. So I think we should be positive about this. It's not the only thing that's going on. It's part of a wider strategy, and that wider strategy will hopefully work. Thank you. Thank you for your response. Thank you. The next question is from Councillor Barraclough. Councillor Barraclough, please ask your question about the water fountains at Marine Gardens, Marine Hall Gardens, to the street scene, parks and open spaces portfolio holder now. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Could the portfolio holder advise if there is a routine, daily or weekly inspection procedure for the water fountains located within the Marine Hall Gardens? Evidence suggests that there isn't one, as the fountains have not worked to their full potential, some not at all, for a number of weeks, including over the recent hot spell, including the two bank holidays. The failure of the water jets has been already identified as grass clippings blocking the jets, thus putting the pumps under stress, increasing the potential for mechanical failure, resulting in expensive repair. Does the portfolio holder agree with me that a weekly inspection procedure is required to be undertaken by wire officers to ensure the system is working fully at all times? and that the cost of repairing such a system outweighs the cost of collecting the grass clippings in this specific area to prevent further blockages. Therefore, it is also recommended that the grass clippings are collected within this area going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bridge, would you please respond? Thank you, Madam Mayor. First outing, we've got a question from the Deputy, the Deputy Mayor. I've never seen that before. So, uh, we do have a weekly um, <coughs> inspection uh, it also is cleaned and serviced twice a year. We were aware of the problems, but we just couldn't fix them overnight. We were also aware that part of the problem was the grass cutting. That has been addressed. That will not happen again. However, another major part is vandalism, and that is what has been caused. Now, we know we have a problem around there um, with the lighter nights and everything else. But we are at the moment getting um, prices for um, uh, getting it repaired. We're, we're uh, in the process of doing that. But again, rather like I was saying about the dog fouling, which was the council can't do everything. Um, and I would just like to say that we should be saying to our constituents, do you know where your children are and what they're up to? Because generally vandalism is caused by children. We have to also take responsibility and as leaders of the community we should also be doing that but it is being addressed thank you councillor barraclough if you wish to ask a supplementary question please do so now thank you madam mayor uh, do we have a time scale on the repairs being completed uh, i'm sorry we're still at the stage of getting um yeah but i, I shall let you know as soon as i know Thank you. That concludes the questions on notice. The next item is executive reports. The first report, first the report of the Leader of the Council. Councillor Henderson, would you please introduce your report? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, there is just something I'd like to say uh, before I put my report before the members, and that is the, uh, the gala season is upon us across wire and Poulton is historically the first one which we've had already and I should like to thank the Deputy Mayor and the Deputy Mayoress for attending and opening Poulton Gala uh, it was very nice to see them there um, it was a very very pleasant day indeed and I hope you enjoyed yourselves the report is before the members and I will take any questions or comments Councillor Emma Anderton Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, 
Councillor Henderson, regarding paragraph 2.2, .2, um, I'd just like to point out that um, the society that did all the tremendously good work, and I echo your sentiments on that, um, with the statue of Sir Peter Fleetwood Hesketh was actually Fleetwood Civic Society and not Historical Society, so it would be good if the uh, minutes and documents could be updated to reflect the sterling work that they did. Thank you. Councillor Henderson, would you please respond? Yes, certainly. Um, yes, we will. We'll change that. And it was an absolutely superb afternoon. No other questions? That concludes the consideration of the leader's report. We will now move on to the report of the resources portfolio holder. Councillor Alan Vincent, would you please introduce your report? Thank you, Madam Mayor. The report is in front of councillors. Happy to take any questions. Are there any questions or comments for Councillor Vincent? No, no questions. Uh, that concludes the consideration of the Resources Portfolio Holders Report. We will now move on to the report of the Street Scene, Parks and Open Spaces Portfolio Holder. Councillor Bridge, would you please introduce your report? Thank you, Madam Mayor. The report's before you. I'm happy to answer any, any questions you may wish to ask. Are there any questions or comments for the portfolio holder? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Bridge, uh, if you could just pass on um, my thanks to the, the team that dealt with all the, the mess following the uh, Garsangala day. Um, it was the busiest I've seen it for years because of the weather. Uh, they did a great job there the next day sorting it out. So if you can pass it on, I'd be grateful. Thank you. I think we're rightly all very proud of the people that work for us here and why. They're dedicated, they've adapted to change, and they're doing a better job than they've ever done before. Are there no other questions? That concludes the consideration of the report oh, of... Sorry, Councillor Kay. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Councillor Kay. Councillor Bridge, uh, 2.2 .2, please. The Friends Group are currently seeking views of residents and visitors um, on the proposals. Would that include also about how many dogs a resident or somebody visiting could walk around that area in a play area at any one time? Because I am concerned I've seen a resident with 10 dogs walking on the park. Not only would he not be able to pick up the poop, but I'm concerned of children's safety. Councillor Bridge, would you please respond? Uh, thank you. Uh, frankly, I don't know, but I will find out and let you know. Okay? Are there any more questions? No. no. That concludes the consideration of the report of Street Scene, Parks and Open Spaces Portfolio Holder. We will now move on to the report of the Planning and Economic Development Portfolio Holder. Councillor Michael Vincent, would you please introduce... Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd just like to pay tribute to Councillor Murphy before I uh, put my report to members. Um, very big shoes to uh, fill in this portfolio. He worked very hard at it and did a very good job for the years, and I hope to continue that work. Um, any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Are there any questions or comments for Councillor Vincent? Councillor Berry, would you please introduce your report? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my report was not able to uh, include the good news that uh, the Council, working with Regenda, has been able to return five empty homes to occupation. Um, these properties were blighting their neighbourhoods, and by us assisting in applying for grants funding from, the, from Homes England, Regenda were able to purchase and renovate these properties also using local firms. So I think it was a big win-win situation uh, for, for the council and for Regenda. Um, in the last three years, using these processes, we've been able to return 14 empty properties to, to 
being used by, by, by residents. So I think it's, it's a good achievement by our housing options team. Uh, they do put a lot of work into this sort of work. My report is before members, and I'll do my best to answer any, any, any questions put to me. Are there any questions or comments for the portfolio holder? Councillor Atkins. Um, bearing in mind the great concern uh, that uh, people have up and down the country regarding homelessness, do we know how many homelessness people we have in the borough? Well, the short answer is not many. Um, if, you, if we're talking about um, what might be termed rough sleepers, I think since the 1st of January we've come across about eight cases of that. Um, half of those didn't want to be assisted and the other half uh, were assisted by the Salvation Army. Um, we do get um, just under 20 cases of people presenting themselves for, as an emergency wanting accommodation uh, and uh, we, we, on the night we usually accommodate those in bed and breakfast and other supporting agencies we use. But our work is really to prevent homelessness um, and in cases where we do get a fair amount of notice that um, people are likely to be um, uh, homeless, we've got to work hard with a lot of agencies using a lot of strategies uh, to make sure that they are rehoused. Um, in about half the cases they are rehoused in the private sector. Uh, quite a few are remain with their existing landlord because we sort out the problems, we educate people how to make sure they pay the rent, other uh, situations like that. Some are, are housed with relatives, some go into social housing. So um, I th again I can only repeat uh, that it is fantastic work of the housing options team that keeps these uh, figures as low as possible because if we do have large numbers of homeless people it's going to cost the borough a lot of money and we have paid a lot of money in the distant past in these cases so it's something that uh, Mark Broadest and the team are to be congratulated on the work that they put in for us. Are there any other questions for Councillor Berry? That concludes the consideration of the Neighbourhood Services and Community Safety Portfolio Holders Report. The next report is from the Leisure, Health and Community Engagement Portfolio Holder. Councillor Bowen, Bowen, sorry, would you please introduce your report? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my reports before you, I've only got one thing to mention, and that's that um, the nominations for the Wire Sports Award, if anybody knows any groups or volunteers or actual uh, athletes, would they please put the names forward so that they can be nominated, because it's a really prestigious award. Thank you. Councillor Ellis. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank the Council and particularly the events team for the hard work they do to help the galas go ahead, um, particularly to Gary at the um, depot who loans the kids the wagons, because um, if he didn't loan them out, um, most of the floats, we wouldn't be able to have the floats, so we do really appreciate it and we appreciate the effort he puts in to let us use those wagons, so thank you. I'll pass those thanks on for you. Um, I know the galas are very important in the community. They bring all the families together. And uh, we, we want to thank as a council all the parents and all the volunteers and helpers that make these special days. Um, you know, otherwise, they wouldn't take place. Councillor Kay. Thank you. Um, item 7, 7.1, I would like to thank the Office of, of WIRE for the support in letting me put the Mental Health Awareness Day, uh, which made a big difference to a lot of young people within our community, especially Chris Wyatt, Shelley Birch and Kerry Cousins, for the time and the effort they put in supporting us on that event. So I'd like to mention that. Thank you. Thank you. I'll pass you. that. I'll pass, I'll pass those thanks on for you. Thanks. Are there any further questions for Councillor Bowen? Thank you, Madam Councillor Chair. Councillor Thank you. 
Um, I just on the counter item uh, 3.1 licensing, um, there was an appeal um, registered, and I'd just like to thank the chair of licensing for making sure that we had a watertight case when we sent it up because we're very aware it costs the council money if we lose. That, that concludes the consideration of the Leisure, Health and Community Engagement Portfolio Holders Report, which is the last of the Executive Reports this evening. Now is the opportunity for members of the Cabinet to make comments or ask questions on the reports of their colleagues. Do any Cabinet members wish to do so? No, that concludes the consideration of executive reports. The next item is a periodic report for, from the chairman of the overview and scrutiny committee, which is on page 19 of the agenda. Councillor Ibison, would, would you please introduce your report? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the report's before you, and I will endeavour to answer any questions. Uh, the only other item is, I believe most of you will be aware that there's a form been left for you to fill in for one of our flood task groups. But I re request that you do fill it in and submit it to Roy. Are there any comments or questions for Councillor Ibison? He will have a chance to respond when all the comments have been made and questions have been asked. Oh, sorry. In that case, the report is noted. The next item is about Treasury management activity in 2017-18. Councillor Alan Vincent, would you please introduce the report and propose the recommendation? Thank you, Madam Mayor. The recommendation uh, is before councillors, obviously. It's the usual snapshot. Um, if there are any questions, I'll try and answer them. Is there a seconder for the proposal? Thank you. Are there any comments, questions or amendments? Would members please vote on the recommendations? Those in favour, please show. That's unanimous. The recommendation is approved. The next item is a report on changes to the Constitution. Councillor Henderson, would you please introduce the report and propose the recommendation? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is um, part of a tidying up of the Constitution. Uh, it repeats itself in certain parts. Um, I've noted that we are changing a lot of uppercase letters for lowercase letters, which are very, very important. Uh, but before I continue or take any uh, notes, uh, I would just like to uh, bring to the attention of the members uh, that in Appendix 4 of the report, the final paragraph on page 66 of the agenda has been erroneously included in the list of functions of the Planning Committee and should instead be included as the final paragraph of the list of functions of the Standards Committee on page 72 of the agenda, which actually goes to show, Madam Mayor, that we do need to go through it and read it and make sure that it's absolutely fine. Um, Madam Mayor, I propose that the Council agree the recommendations uh, in the report with that amendment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Is there a seconder for the proposal? Are there any questions, comments or amendments? Councillor Fail. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Although many of the suggested constitution changes are cosmetic, there are other changes which really warrant being looked at by a committee. Recommendation 3.3 refers to changes in consultation requirements for Cabinet, and Power 5.4 elaborates on this suggesting that some of the current requirements for consult consultation are restrictive. Now that sort of terminology always starts to start alarm bells ringing with me. Does that mean the Council wants to reduce its obligations to consult? It could be read as though the intention is to consult only when legislation 
dictates it has to happen rather than when it would actually help informed decision making. A main criticism in all three scrutiny call-ins since 2015 has been the lack of consultation. So if this goes through, it would seem we can now expect an even poorer standard of consultation. That is unacceptable to me and will mean the public will be disenfranchised even more so than they are now. Is that possible, I hear some of you say. And yes, it is possible, is the answer. <laughs> Recommendation 3.6, and the changes referred to in Appendix 3, throws up a question relating to the purpose of the removal of key wording. And without explanation in the report, leads to a serious concern over the suitability of changes such as that for Article 10 on page 61. A number of changes suggest analysis of policy issues is not required. There may be a plausible explanation for such changes. I can't think what such an explanation may be, but this is not the forum to discuss the reasoning behind the changes. A more formal committee setting is required, which could spend some time closely examining the changes. I'm, so, I'm sure such a committee would soon get to the bottom of any changes that are cosmetic or self-explanatory. Sorry, that are not cosmetic or self-explanatory. Recommendation 3.7 and power 5.8 highlight the basic issue with the, this report. It says, a further review will be undertaken. But like suggested changes here, it provides no structure for the review to be undertaken by a committee. In the past, I understand such reviews were undertaken by the Standards Committee. But it seems now as though a vital step is being bypassed. This is introducing an unnecessary risk of mating, making detrimental changes to the Constitution. It is for this reason and the specific issues I have mentioned that I propose the recommendations of Para 3 are replaced with a requirement for the proposed changes to be reviewed by a dedicated committee, perhaps standards ONS or a working group, prior to it being brought back to full council. I propose that <coughs> amendment. Councillor Fell, I'm taking that as a, um, a formal proposal for an amendment. Um, you, you need a seconder. Uh, could I second that to Madam Mayor and uh, reserve my right to speak? Thank you. Are there any other members which wish to speak before we consider the amendment? No. So we'll actually take... You now have the opportunity to comment and have debate on the proposed amendment which has been seconded. Does anybody, anybody want, wish to speak um, for, uh, either for or against the amendment? Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just to make clear, when Councillor Fail says that there were three uh, people spoke in opposition to that consultation at three call-ins, it was only him three times. Um, well, yeah, I think it was. Um, the, the, the amendments are like a tidying up exercise. Madam Mayor, we just had a GDPR presentation about incorrect information being given and he's provided, providing information to the public that is totally incorrect. And I'm not going to take GDPR lectures from you having you spent 45 minutes sat listening to him. It's got absolutely nothing to do with personal data if you do want a lecture on it, but we'll save that for another day. Um, uh, Madam Mayor, these are, this is a tidying up of the constitu uh, Constitution. Um, ONS's powers are not watered down, as he suggests. And when he says that this is, the amendments to the Constitution are not a matter for full council and they should be discussed elsewhere, he is plainly wrong. Because the Constitution itself sets out that changes to the con to Constitution are very much matters for full council. So it very much comes here and not to a group. Uh, Councillor Shewan. Yeah, uh, what Councillor Fail was pointing out was that it needed a, a dedicated committee to look at, at the changes. And then they would have to come back to Council because, as you quite rightly say, uh, Michael, that the, the, uh, the, it, any changes to the Constitution is entirely in the hands of the Council. 
But can't what Councillor Fair was uh, uh, making clear was it needed a closer looking at, and the, and the best way of doing that is to take it to another group of people, better standards because at least it's got a couple of independents in there, um, uh, and, um, and, and they come back with recommendations to the full council. Councillor Henderson. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The report is before you. You can either support it or you can't support it. That is entirely up to you as individuals. Um, you've, had an, you've had another amendment to the amendments put before you. You can either support that or, or not. The purpose of this is a tidying up. We've already identified one or two problems within it. That is why it is being done. And so, therefore, I would recommend that you support this amendment as put to you by myself. Thank you. Um, Councillor Steve, Brian Stevenson, as um, a seconder, um, you reserve the right I'm, I'm obliged to you, um, Madam Mayor. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is we, we always get the usual political delinquency from, uh, from Councillor Michael Vincent, which is part of him. And long may it remain. Well, I quite enjoy it, actually. Um, right, now, to get down to business, um, Madam Mayor, I think this really is, um, it's really a touch of Shakespeare with, with it. It's to be, oh, no, no, it's to be, uh, or, or not to be. That, 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 that exa that's uh, exactly uh, what, what it is. You know, and I, I just wonder what he will think about it, the grammar and the, the state of how it's presented in the book on page 55 is a, a typical uh, example of it. Now, what I would say here, now and then, and I, I'm not joking about it, I'm quite serious. I think this, it's been thought up in a pub over a few pints. You know, as more alcohol has been consumed, soon the worse it has got. It's badly thought out, badly thought out, and I hope you're listening, Councillor uh, Vincent, hope you're listening, and Councillor Henderson, badly thought out and badly presented. The people who thought this up need to go back to school. J just imagine submitting this as an exam, exam paper. You get no marks. It would be you'd be thrown, took out the building, sent out, dismissed, expelled. It's been hastily cobbled together. No doubt at all about that. And uh, the old saying, of course, we all know the old saying: "Act in haste, repent in leisure." Here, it's uh, regret in leisure. Now, now, and I'm sure, Councillor. Shewan, as an old soldier, knows this one. There's an old saying we used to have in the army when you didn't understand anything and it was a load of old cobblers, uh, or appeared to be, uh, we used to say, it, it's like a Chinese guard report. That's exactly what it looks like. Um, it's not Confucius, it's confusion, definitely. It needs to be sent back from whence it came, put together in a correct <coughs> manner, and then have a proper debate about it. Uh, Councillor Shewan has suggested, and I think he's absolutely right, that a small uh, group of people ought to get together, somebody with a lot of common sense, um, I'm sure Councillor Shewan would serve on it himself, and, uh, and come back and present a, a, a much more acceptable document to, um, uh, to this council. So I have great pleasure in um, supporting um, this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stevenson. Councillor Fail, as the proposer of the amendment, please respond to the debate. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just, just briefly, there are sufficient concerns, as been highlighted by several councillors, which warrant this report to be taken away for a more formal scrutiny, and I propose this amendment. Thank you. Okay, we will now move to a vote on the amendment. Those in favour, please show.
It's, sorry, to make it clear, it's the amendment as proposed by Councillor Fail and seconded by Councillor Stevenson. against Members, you can, if you wish, um, now have a debate on the original motion with the amendment as proposed by Councillor Henderson, or if you consider you've had sufficient debate, you can move straight to the vote. Councillor Henderson. Um, I'd just like to make one comment, and that was regarding Councillor Brian Stevens' comments, uh, Madam Mayor. And that is that he stated that whoever wrote this report, it should be sent back to them and they made other derogatory comments as well. Uh, the officers put together the constitution with legal advice and then it comes to us to look at it. Um, so therefore, I have always thought uh, that it is very ill-advised and very bad to criticise the officers, especially in public. I'd like to move to the vote. Thank Point you, of Madam order, Mayor. I'm not criticising the officers at all. I never mentioned the officers in name at all. I said whoever is responsible for it uh, should, uh, should go back to basics again. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> right, that concludes the debate. Would members please vote now on the recommendation with the correction proposed by Councillor Henderson? Those in favour, please show. Those against? No, ten. Sorry, ten. Here. Any, abstent Any abstentions? No. It's not abstaining. No. Okay, the recommendation is approved. The next item is notices of motion. However, there are none. So that concludes the business for this evening and the meeting is now closed. Thank you for attending. <laughs> 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 <laughs>